Hello, welcome to my channel. Today we're gonna paint on a frame. Okay, so I got this frame from Goodwill for like $1.29 and I think it might have even been on sale past that, so heck yes. And I decided it would be really cool to put some kind of canvas in the center and then paint on top of that, but like paint the whole thing. So painting the frame and the canvas all with one continuous painting. So I'm using this canvas board by Crescent. It's awesome, I love this stuff. This was my last board of it and I need to get some more. But I took the glass from the inside of the frame and I just traced around it with a pencil. Um, this is super easy to do if you want to do it yourself and then you're going to cut that out and make sure that it fits and everything fits okay. So that's good. I'm glad I didn't cut it too small. And then I'm going to sand it. Uh, my frame wasn't like unfinished. It did seem to have like some kind of varnish or something on it. So I gave it a sand. I'm kind of lazy like with my sanding. So it definitely could have been a better sanding job. But you know, I did my best and it was good enough. So lazily sand around your frame and get off as much of the varnish as you can. I did the inside as well. And then I wanted to make sure that everything stayed down and wasn't gonna move around. So I used some Eileen's tacky glue because we love tacky glue. You can stick anything with it. And I took the little board piece and I stuck it in there um, and gave it a good push down to make sure that it was all nice and secure. And then after that, I actually put in some more glue on top of it so that I could glue in the very back portion of the frame. So this is like not coming out. This is what it's gonna be like. The back of the frame is glued to the picture. And then I put down the little like metal things and I used some acrylic inks to weigh it down in each corner so that it dried evenly let it dry for a couple of hours and then I gessoed the entire thing with white gesso. I wanted to give it like an all white base so it was kind of like I was painting on a raised canvas. So I spent some time with this step. I think I gessoed it twice to get it to a pretty even white color and I'm just using like regular gesso, nothing special about it, but I definitely recommend using two coats. It's just kind of you kind of need it. So after that, everything was looking pretty good and I was ready to paint on the canvas. So I waited for it to dry and I started painting. I'm using the Golden Open Acrylic Slow Dry, Slow Dry Acrylics. I love these things. I live in Colorado and it's really, really dry here. And these are my favorite acrylic paints. They're so awesome and they're really pigmented. And it's nice that they're slow dry because you can kind of blend on the canvas really, really easily. Like you can take the paints and kind of um, just add them on top and then blend that in. And they're so pigmented and I could like, honestly go on for days about them. This could turn into a whole review of the Golden Open slow dry paints because they're amazing and they dry slow, but not as slow as oil. So they're like a really, really happy medium between the two. So if you feel like acrylics dry too fast, but oils dry too slow, try these slow dry acrylics. Like I promise you, you will not regret it. They are my favorite, favorite acrylics. So the painting that I'm working on, I went to the Botanic Gardens um, and I took a photo in this area where there's like all of these plants and then there's also like a pool underneath and the, these big rocks. And I thought it was a really pretty photo and I didn't really know what I was gonna do with it. Like, and I thought I might use it in some art and I decided to paint it. And oh my God, I don't know what I was doing because there was so much detail and it was so intimidating because all these rocks were underwater. And so there was all of these little like water specks and everything on top. And it was really, really intimidating. Um, so I guess there's, here's some advice if you're ever in that situation where you're looking at something you've decided to paint and it's really, really complicated and you're starting to get overwhelmed. What I do is I really try to start as loose and as blocky as possible. You could see I really, really started with a lot of like very wide areas of color. And one of the ways that you can get rid of like <laughs> not focus on the details is to blur your eyes. So when you're looking at the picture, just kind of let your eyes go out of focus and you'll start seeing the larger areas of color and the little details will start fading away. You could also take off your glasses, um, you know, but blurring your eyes is a little easier because then you can unblur them when you look back at the painting. But that's what I do. It really, really helps. And then I move to like a medium building phase, which is kind of what I'm in right now, where I'm starting to build up more of the shapes and the shading, but I'm really ignoring right now all of the like water specks for the most part and um, things like that. I'm just kind of painting the things that are below the surface. So sometimes it's easier to start like at the bottom of the painting and work your way up, um, if that makes sense. So I'm also working around 
around the whole painting. I've talked about this in videos before, but it's really important to work around the whole painting because you don't want to finish something perfectly and then realize that you have to move it. And also when you finish one thing perfectly and the rest is like, all like messy. It's harder to see the whole the thing as a whole. Um, it's important to cover up all the different white spots so that you can really see how your colors are working. There's just so many different reasons that it's important to work your whole painting at one time. So I really recommend it if you haven't tried it. If you're the kind of person that starts with an eye and goes from there, I'd recommend trying working your painting at the whole to as a whole. Um, it really can make such a big difference, especially in terms of your composition and your workflow and frustration, things like that. It really can help avoid a lot of frustration. So I started work on the details and I'm using like a medium small brush, I would say to get in some more of the details, but I'm still not focused on the really, really little details. It's kind of like I start really big and then I move to medium and then I move to small and then I move to really small. And that's kind of the way that I break it up so that I don't get so overwhelmed. Another thing that I did with this painting because I was getting a little overwhelmed with it is I took quite a few breaks from it. I think I took two breaks from this painting. One was like two weeks and the other was probably like a couple months maybe. Um, this painting took a while to complete and it was because I was just like not feeling like sitting down and doing a bunch of detail work to finish it out. But one of the good things about taking breaks with your paintings is that when you come back to them, a lot of times things that you had seen before, you just don't notice as much and you realize they're not as important and you can't even remember where they are. And you'll start realizing where you actually don't need to change things. Um, it can be a really helpful way to not overwork your piece. If you are prone to overworking things, then I would recommend like taking some time away from your piece when you're like, oh, I think I might be overworking this. Stop. Just stop. You can always come back to it later. Promise yourself that you can come back to it later so that you like, you know, kill the overworker, you know, so that it, it it's satisfied. But, um, let yourself take a break from it because you'll come back and you'll start seeing, no, this part's actually okay. So I'm kind of working on some shadow detailing down at the bottom because there was definitely a lot of leaves in the shadows. So I wanted those to be a little bit more um, subtle and faded away. So I used a little less detail on those and I am starting to do a little bit more work in the mid detail on the rocks and adding in some little shadows and things and things here and there. And I'm doing a lot of blending on the canvas. I love blending on the canvas. I just put in pure white and then blended it into the gray and it just turns into gray. Um, it's such a nice and quick and easy way to blend your colors. Um, you have to be a little careful with it and it's definitely not always the way to go, but it can be really helpful, especially when you're in the later stages of a painting. Um, and also when you're first setting up a painting as well, um, before you have to really worry about like minute details in color. Um, so that's kind of something that I also find helpful. Another thing that taking breaks from your paintings can really, really help with is burnout. Um, I've actually been really proud of myself recently because I've been able to create and work pretty much every single day. Um, and the reason that I think that's been working is because I've been pacing myself and because I've been taking breaks from certain pieces when they start sapping your energy. So sometimes when you're painting, you feel really, really awesome and you're really vibing with it. And that may not happen right at the start of when you're in your painting session. You may kind of have to force yourself into painting, but there's usually a moment in painting when you're really vibing with it. But if you're getting to the point where you're really like you can't even bring yourself to work on a piece, it's really important to take a break before you start hating that piece um, and work on something else. Follow your creative interest to an extent. Obviously, if you have work that has to be done, like deadlines that have to be met, then you do have to keep that in mind. But schedule in plan breaks, like take even like one day break away from your painting and do something completely different can be really, really helpful. Like you will burn out if you're pushing yourself to be creative every single day, especially if the creativity is repetitive. If you're doing the same thing every single day, you're not getting any creative breaks where you're really pushing your creativity in a different way. So I definitely recommend taking breaks to help avoid burnout because, um, 
one of the things that I've been doing is a lot of times at the end of the day, I will feel burnt out from working all day. I'll feel a little tired. I'll feel like I'm ready to stop, but I'll also still feel a lot of creative urges and like want to draw and things like that. But I'll kind of stop myself because everything that I want to go draw, I feel like, oh, I have to do it for work. Um, So I will stop myself from doing work things and I'll be like, well, what do you want to do? But you can't do it for work. You have to do it for yourself. Um, And for you, it could be you don't have to work on your project um, or just looking at another kind of creative outlet like playing Animal Crossing or something like that, like a video game where you get to decorate or Minecraft where you get to create something or doing a collage or doing a puzzle. Like I've been really enjoying puzzles recently, but try doing something else. Um, Even if you feel creative, just because you feel creative doesn't mean you have to take advantage of every single time you feel creative. Because if you do that and you go through one of these spurts where you're like creative all of the time, then you might burn yourself out. And a better way is, or at least in my opinion, a better way that has worked better for me is to try to prolong those periods of creativity by making them sustainable so that I'm not burning out so that I'm not literally spending 24 seven painting and painting and painting and painting to the point where I'm exhausted at the end of the day and my back hurts and you know, all of that kind of stuff. I'm trying to put a better focus on taking care of myself, taking care of my body and making sure that I take breaks. Another advantage to taking a break from your painting is that in the time that you take a break, you can work on something else and maybe learn new skills that then you can incorporate into your painting, which is always really cool because then you can come back with like this fresh brain and a fresh creative mind and you might think of things or solutions to problems that you had that you hadn't ever like thought of before because you were so stuck in like one area of the painting. So that can be another thing that's really helpful. I guess a lot of this video is talking about the advantage of taking breaks. Um, but you know, I, I just think that it's something that maybe isn't talked about as much. Like we talk a lot about burnout, but how do you actually prevent burnout, um, is something that a lot of people have kind of asked me. And I feel like a lot of burnout prevention is preserving your creativity. And a huge portion of that is related to making sure that you take breaks, making sure that you take care of your body, making sure, I I mean, I'm really not that great at that, but by taking breaks, you're not pushing yourself or your body past the point that it can stand. And even taking like short breaks when you're painting, like I've been taking breaks like every half hour. Um, Also, speaking of every half hour, I've had a hard time painting or doing really anything for over 30 minutes at a time. And that's okay. If any of you are in the same boat, it's okay. I've been jumping back and forth between projects like every 30 minutes, but that's okay. Um, I have just made sure that I have enough projects and enough things that I can switch between that I'm still getting things done on my to-do list, but I'm keeping myself engaged and active and I'm not as I'm not getting as bored when I start like losing energy, I'm switching tasks. And a lot of times I'll switch between a creative task and a non-creative task, like doing the laundry or putting something away or tidying. Um, And sometimes in creative tasks, I'll switch between creative tasks like painting or creating art and creative tasks like editing, editing photos, editing videos, putting that kind of stuff together. And then I will also throw in replying to emails and all of that other stuff. So by rotating between like the four of those categories, I'm able to retain more of my creativity throughout the day. And it's kind of one of those things where I know there's this concern that you'll lose your creativity uh, the next day. But what I try to think of it as is building something up like something is building up and building up and building up and you're just preserving that energy so that you'll still have it tomorrow. Also, at this point, I'm adding in all of the white little highlights, and I think things are finally starting to look like water, which made me so happy. There was a whole lot of trusting the process involved in this painting, and I'm really, really happy with how it came out. I think it actually does look like rocks underwater, but I really had to trust myself throughout this whole painting, which is really hard to do. Um, I don't know if anyone else struggles with this. I'm sure that you do, because one thing that I've learned through YouTube is that if I struggle with something, someone else probably struggles with with it as well. But I struggle with trusting myself, especially in like the ugly teenage phase, which if you don't know what the ugly teenage phase is, it's like, you know, when you're in like late middle school and you're like hitting puberty and like there's acne everywhere and you're like all gangly and you're like 
voices cracking and like all kinds of stuff is happening. So you're in your ugly teenage phase before you blossom into the beautiful swan that you are. And <laughs> art has the same thing. Art has an ugly teenage days b- stage before it blossoms into the beautiful swan that it is. And sometimes that stage is really hard to push through. And I think a lot of paintings get abandoned during the ugly teenage phase, which like so sad. Don't abandon your teenagers. But I think that's that's like a big problem that a lot of people have. But if you start trusting the process, you you are an artist. You know what you're doing. And if you don't feel like you know what you're doing, then you're probably following a tutorial. And if you're not, then go look one up and find somebody that knows what they're doing so that you get a little bit more confidence. But trust the process. If it looks ugly or weird midway through, keep working on it. It's okay. You're not finished yet. A lot of artwork is laying the base and the groundwork for the rest of the painting. And this painting looks completely different now than it did at the start of this before I had put in any of these details. You know, even the rocks you've seen have transformed from just lumps of paint now that I'm adding in cracks and the areas where the light is shining on them through the leaves and they're starting to turn into rocks and three dimensional shapes. So it's really just about trusting trusting the process going from that large to that small all um, in the painting and just allowing yourself to keep reworking areas but not reworking them too much because if you feel you know when you're working an area too much you know when you're overworking a painting you do you do you know you have that voice in your head that's like you should stop working on this now you you might you should stop working on this now listen to that that voice you can just take a break it's fine there's nothing wrong with taking breaks there's so much demonized I feel like about taking breaks like hustle culture and stuff like that and YouTube punishes you for it like I took a break and YouTube punished me for it like you know and I'll probably do a whole video about maybe like why I took a break how I burned out on YouTube and like what I'm planning on doing and you know like that kind of thing but it's one of those things where like you literally get penalized in the real world for taking a break so don't penalize yourself in your own artwork for taking a break and build breaks into your schedule because it's really, really important. And if there's one thing that I've learned about avoiding burnout, it is that that is the biggest way to avoid burnout. And if you don't want to take breaks, then I'm sorry, but you have to like you have to or else your body is going to take a break for you. OK, it's it's, it's just a fact of life. Um, so at this point, it's like months later and I'm finally adding in these final little details to this leaf that is like hanging over the top of everything. And I am so happy with how this painting turned out. There's a couple more pieces that like maybe I would have worked on a little bit more if I'd had the energy, but I didn't really. And I'm overall really happy with how it turned out. I think that it does look like you know, rocks through water. And I'm really glad that I pushed through and managed to finish this painting. I hope that you enjoyed this like rambling about taking breaks and things like that. I did try to think of um, kind of some topics that might be interesting to chat about during this video, while also talking about like the painting and what I'm doing and how I'm painting on a frame. I love how that came out. I think it looks so cool. And I really want to do this again. It just looks like this like full finished piece and you can just set it down on the desk and it's got, oh, I just love it. Um, 10 out of 10, paint on a frame, go to Goodwill um, or your local thrift store and get a wooden frame or the Dollar Tree probably has them and just paint on it. So that's it. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget, I stream on YouTube at 2 p.m. Mountain Standard Time every Sunday and I teach art classes on paintlive.net. And as always, have a great rest of your day. Bye guys.